If you want to see my answers to the eyeshadow palette tag round two, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elen, and welcome back to HMM Makeup, or, hmm, makeup? I have not done a tag in a while, and today's the day for a tag, because Samantha March and Allie Glines have come out with a version two of their eyeshadow palette tag. And I heard about it, and I said, yes, please. And so we're gonna have a little fun talking eyeshadow palettes. So if you're an eyeshadow palette junkie, then uh, let's get into it. Okay, I have the tag questions right here and let's just jump in, shall we? All right, the first question is my all-time favorite. And I have a three-way tie. I know I'm cheating already, it gets better, I was weak. Okay, I was weak, I am an eyeshadow palette junkie, and to pick one as an all-time favorite, are you kidding me? Not gonna happen. So let me uh, pull out the three that, uh, that I think deserve a top billing. And here they are. I'm going to go from uh, least to, to most well-known. I think that this one is not known by a whole lot of people. This is the Chloe Morello 2, uh, Ciate and Chloe Morello too. I love the color story in this palette and I, it is a palette that I have the intention of panning because every single time I use this palette, I wonder why I don't use it more. It's not available anymore. I, in some cases, I just feel bad about showing some palettes that are discontinued, but unfortunately all three that I'm going to show you that are favorites, they're discontinued. But you know what? It just says, uh, enjoy what you have in your collection and uh, and go back to old favorites because that's what I'm doing. Now this one, I was excited. I was pretty new into getting serious about makeup. And when this one came out, I thought, I have something on my nose. Um, I thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is the one. This is the one. And it's the color story that just gets me. They are all uh, beautiful, and I think you can tell that a number of them have been uh, quite well loved. I like every single one of the shadows in here. I don't wear these colors that often, but on the um, lower lash line, they look uh, pretty good on me, in my opinion. It's just because I have green eyes. Sometimes wearing green uh, kind of just doesn't uh, work too well, but the, the brown, the yellow, well, brown's a plural, the yellow, the, this this red is gorgeous with uh, green eyes. I love this one. Electric is my favorite one out of the whole palette. It's just beautiful. I could talk about it a whole lot. It's discontinued. I'm going to move on, but you would have to pry this out of my cold, dead hands because I it's it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. And the last one as well that I just like, the Electric from Urban Decay, this one is not leaving my collection under any circumstance. And it's the Pastel Goth. I think this palette, uh, I don't use it very often, but any time that I do, I think it's gorgeous. Uh, and it's just, it's a pastel version of the rainbow. Um, and I just, I'm such a fan, just such a fan of this palette. It's. It's such an unusual set of mattes, and it's all mattes, which love. Um, yeah, so the Morello 2, the Chloe Morello uh, 2 with Ciate, the uh, Subculture, and the Pastel Goth are just, they're all three stinking amazing, in my opinion. Don't hate me. I have a tie for question number two, which is my new favorite. And I have two relatively new palettes in my collection that I just, I can't choose because they're so different. Uh, the first one is this uh, Norvina Volume 5. And the reason I love it is because out of all of the Norvina Volumes, Volume 5 is the one. It is the one, just like 
you know, the matrix, the one. This is my Neo when it comes to uh, eyeshadow pellets from uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills as far as the Norvina line. When I saw this palette, it came out last year. When I saw it, I knew it would be mine. But I am cost averse and I knew that it had to come on sale. And when it came on sale right before Christmas, uh, a number of weeks before Christmas, I said, this is the time, it's 40% off and I'm going to get it. But I always knew that I was going to get it because the color story is beautiful. Uh, I'll put um, at least one look that I did with this palette and I just, the moment I made the look, I just, I knew I was in love. It's just fantastic. And the second one I have not played with a whole lot yet and I'm just I'm for some reason somewhat intimidated by it but it's the subculture vibes and I know I will love it I'm just do you ever get that feeling that fear that you're you you get something you want to use it but you're worried that you, somehow you're gonna mess up the experience that's where I'm with this palette and I don't know why and it's the Metropolis I have wanted the Metropolis for ages I ended up uh, gifting it uh, to myself last year and I don't I think it was for Christmas um, I, I gave myself a Pat McGrath at my birthday which was the Midnight Sun yes so this was the this was the Christmas palette and it was uh, going to be uh, discontinued and it uh, came on sale and I just said this is my chance and it's the I don't know why. I don't know why I have this psychological thing with this palette, but every time I look at it, I just think it's gorgeous. And I did a swatches video for this palette, I'll put it right there. I, actually, all the palettes I'm talking to you about, you can probably find a swatches video on my channel about it if you want to, to take a look. And also, also very often first impressions at a minimum. Um, yeah, the golds in here uh, sold me on the idea that I could get the Metropolis for a an edgy feeling palette plus um, helped me get the golds that I so desperately wanted from uh, Natasha Denona. So this is like a one-two punch, uh, which is why it's it's in a tie with the Norvina purples. And I'm a big fan of purples, again, because I have green eyes. All right, we're going to get moving on those questions. Uh, the next question is a palette that I keep for the memories. And interestingly enough, this is one of the contenders for the Pan Up palette for this year. And it is a cool toned palette. And the reason I keep it, uh, I definitely keep it for two reasons. The biggest one is it comes from my friend Lillian. She gave it to me uh, as a hand-me-down palette. She, she, I think, used it maybe once, barely used it. Uh, and I thought, are you kidding me? This is a cool toned palette. It's beautiful. It does make me think of my mom because she uh, tended to use cool toned uh, eyeshadows. So it does make me think of my mom. And uh, and it also, of course, makes me think of Lillian who gifted it to me. Thank you again, Lillian, if you are watching this video. I really appreciate it. It's a number of beautiful cool toned uh, shadows, as I mentioned before, and a beautiful rosy peach highlighter. So it's a it's a gorgeous palette. I am very lucky. I feel very lucky to have this palette, and uh, actually used it yesterday. And I used the burgundy uh, yesterday, and immediately I thought, why am I not using this palette more? It just it turned out beautifully. Okay, the next one is the most underrated palette, and I have to tell you, I don't get it. I don't get the hate that this palette is receiving. I, yeah, it's a mystery to me and it's, it's this puppy. It's awesome. It's awesome. I even used it today, not even knowing I was going to do this video, not even knowing what I was going to talk about this palette today. I have, um, one of the colors on my brow bone and it's this, uh, AI color right here. But I use so many of these. It is a dual chrome lovers just dream. Um, I use, gosh, I use all of them. I'm just gonna take the brush out so I don't lose it on the to the ground. Um, all of these. So Cyberspace has is, has a beautiful green shift. I use uh, all of these. Call it 
Uh, not a bot is probably the one I use the least because I have other alternatives that are very close to that. Static Y3K has my heart. It is disgustingly beautiful. Uh, and Override is another one that I, I like. I like all of these in a big way. And I'm missing one. Yeah, Call, call IT was one that I was wearing last week. They, they're so good. They're so good. I I sometimes wonder if we get into the echo chamber and we all start saying the same thing. I can, I cannot sing its praises often enough. I'm in here multiple times a week and I have hundreds of pallets. Why would I go here if I have shadows that, that are easily accessible in my collection that, that would mimic this. It's because I consistently like my looks. So I don't understand why this one gets so much hate. I think it's one of my favorite naked palettes. It just is. It's one of my favorite palettes and it is a palette that I go to for inner to two thirds of the lid. It never steers me wrong. It's, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. I got it the, the day. No, it wasn't even launched yet. And I managed to, to buy it and I've loved it ever since. So I didn't get it on a deal. Didn't get it on a discount. Definitely paid full price. And you, you could not, you could not bribe me for it. You could not convince me in any way, shape or form to get rid of it, period. This next one is a weird question. It's not a favorite, but you can't get rid of it. And I had to think about it. I had to think about it. And I thought, okay, I don't use it really, but I can't get rid of it. Like it's not a favorite. It's not a, a palette I go to to use necessarily. I do once in a while, but it's definitely not a go-to palette. And it's the Urban Decay Full Spectrum. Let, let me explain, let me explain. It is a, an amazing color reference, amazing color reference. So when I'm trying to layer shadows and I'm trying to figure out a look, I can pretty much figure it out with all the colors in here. It's just a really nice, complete rainbow in my opinion. And, uh, and so I can figure out what it is that I want in one palette, right? With various finishes, various colors and then go into my collection and figure out what it is that I want to use if I don't want to use this palette. And most of the time I'm not using this palette, but as a reference point, as a starting point, I would not, I just don't want to get rid of this palette because it's useful. Even if I only use it for finger swatches, it's, it's been really useful for me. So no, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to get rid of it, even though I don't technically use it on my eyes. Who knows, maybe after this video, I'll end up using it on my eyes, I don't know. Uh, the next one is a fave collab. All right, uh, this one's rough, a little rough. Um, this woman was a fantastic YouTuber. I loved her to bits. And that's why it's a little bit, it's bittersweet, not just a little bit, it's bittersweet to, to talk about it. And it is Mel Thompson. And she came out with Tiny Marvels. And I love this palette so much. I sent a copy of it, essentially sent her the palette uh, as well. I sent uh, Tiny Marvels to Steph Lyons as well. And, uh, and if you have not watched Steph Lyons, I highly recommend you take a look at her channel. She's, a, she's an amazing person. The color story in here, Mel and Sydney Grace did such a good job and it was a labor of love. This was not a, I want to make a buck type of thing. This was a, a passion project for sure. And I'm positive it was also for the Sydney Grace team as well, a passion project. This color story is awesome. And these shadows to make your eyes pop, they are wonderful. 
the the color payoff of the mats and the mats are gorgeous the color payoff for the mats is is terrific uh, smooth very smooth application and then the the dual chromes in here at scarab if i want a va 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 boom um, sultry my eyes are amazing kind of an evening scarab just is the cat's meow in a big way and um, and the fact that this palette was put together and was so mel I think that's why I am so impressed with it it fit her her belief system it fit her aesthetic uh, including her tattoos. It was just so, it is just so her that um, I think no matter what, this palette's not leaving my collection. It is a constant reminder of people doing the right thing for the right reasons and coming out with a product that blows most palettes out of the water. It's awesome. It's awesome. And I know that Steph loves her palette that she got from me. Um, it's, it's a gem of a, an outcome for a collab between a creator and a brand. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I was in awe of it when I got it and I continue to be this, this is the standard and it's a high bar. The next one is the 2021 favorite. And you heard me gush over the Naked Cyber, but that is not what is going to win it. It is going to be this little gem. And it's this little gem for a couple of reasons. Number one, it convinced me, not number one, number one from a makeup enthusiast point of view. It rekindled no not rekindled that's not the right word i've always had a about small like tiny palettes to me they're they're like compacts and i haven't been a, a big fan of palettes that small uh, despite having purchased a few for example i did purchase a the ruby and the amethyst from huda beauty with the nine pans and then my significant other, Richard, went to Germany. And I didn't even know he was doing this. He went into a shop and he ended up, he goes, oh, she likes makeup. He ended up getting me a palette from Kiko Milano. And I'm running out of cards, so I'm going to start putting links uh, to these palettes uh, in the description box. This is what it looks like. And little did he know that he picked the perfect palette for my eye color. He picked the number three, which is, um, it's, it's Glamour Multi Finish Palette in uh, number three. And he picked the perfect palette for someone with green eyes. And I looked at all nine of them, and this is the best one. I ended up doing a number of looks on this channel with this palette. If I am going anywhere, and, and they're, the, the, the um, pans are quite small, kind of like Viseart. Uh, pans and usually it bothers me and it doesn't bother me anymore I somehow this palette was so good I was kind of flabbergasted because when when he first brought it to me I thought okay great I get to try Kiko but am I going to like it and the first time I used it I'm telling you to do an eye look it took me five minutes and it turned out beautifully <laughs> kind of like it was too good. It didn't take enough effort. Am I okay with this kind of a look? And uh, and I've used it quite a few times and it is my palette, my default palette uh, for on the go when I want a professional look for daytime evening. I can pretty much do anything that I need to with, with this palette. So yeah, that is my favorite for 2021 and it's because um, it came from someone who knew what it is that I appreciated, knew he wanted to get me something that I probably couldn't get in Canada, which 
he was bang on. I mean, he he uh, knocked it out of the park without even knowing he was in the park. <laughs> How's that? Um, so that is, I'm always going to remember that I got this um, from Richard in 2021. I, I'll never forget it. So that's why it's my favorite of 2021. Now here's a palette I did not, I did not expect to love. I just decided to get it uh, because if I got it, I would end up getting free shipping from Tarte and they were having a mega sale and I thought, ah, why not give it a shot? And you know, if I poo poo it off, it wasn't super expensive. It was 20 bucks or something and I, I'll, I'll be fine. Well, I have done more than one look on this channel with this palette. It is fantastic. There is cool. There is warm. Oop, there is warm in here. It is eight shadows total. I have done three looks so far. It is very compact. You can see that it fits in my hand easily, easily goes in a purse. Um, and the, the, everything goes, everything goes together. I can't, I don't think that you can butcher a look with this palette. It's, it's neutrals. Yes, but it is convenient. It's got everything you need for a look and it is so darned cute. And my scuba diver self loves this packaging and the contents, solid neutrals. And I have to say, yeah, when I finish a look and I kind of go, that turned out well. And I've done at least three looks, like I said, with this palette. And every single time I think this turned out well. <laughs> I didn't expect this. I did not expect this. And I ended up getting this one um, because I was getting uh, this one um, by default and I thought that Rainforest of, Rainforest of the Sea would be a good add-on. Moving on. Now for a palette that um, sparks joy and you've seen it already because I was wanting to talk about it next. <laughs> and, uh, and I purchased it obviously because I, it was interesting and when I did introduce it to this channel I did say that part of why I got it is because I love the sea I am a scuba diver and um, I have not been able to be out diving for years now because of everything going on and uh, and this just warmed my heart and uh, just got me kind of in touch with my mermaid self and also uh, enabled me to um, to think back to uh, a number of diving experiences because I keep this palette right behind me on this shelf. Uh, if you watch these videos, you may have noticed it. And uh, and if you look at the videos uh, relative to this palette, I gush about it a whole lot. Let me show you the inside. Mostly this part here is what I love about this palette. So these two rows down here. Uh, they are what makes me love going into this palette and and again the fact that the shadows are in the shape of scales are you kidding me so it is a thematic uh, palette and even the name uh, be a mermaid and make waves it's all perfect the iridescent uh, front as well it's just it, they did such a good job and it's been in my sights since it launched and I only got it in 2021 and I'm kind of going, why did you wait so long? But at the same time, uh, I'm happy I have it now. I, there, I have no regrets. I'm happy. I got it. I wouldn't know what I was missing, I guess, if I didn't get it, but uh, it is a beautiful palette. It's an unusual palette, uh, but it's probably going to be on display in my collection for quite some time to come. The newest palette in my collection, I have not really talked about it yet, and my bad, Mia Kulpa. It is the Pat McGrath Celestial Odyssey. There was the Celestial Divinity last year. This is the uh, Odyssey, and I have not even swatched it yet. It took a long time to get to me. There was a uh, um, shipping, I was gonna say packaging, but shipping problem. And so you'll see it is untouched. 
And the reason that I got it was I kept hearing that this was so much better than last year's uh, Divinity palette, and I don't understand why people are seeing that. So when it came on a pretty decent sale, I decided to order it and to do um, somewhat of a comparison, even if it's just to satisfy my confusion. Uh, I will do a, um, first off, a swatches video of uh, this palette, obviously, but also I will be doing uh, comparison swatches to the Celestial Divinity. I just, I know that this palette is still available um, as far as the timing of this, uh, me filming this video. Uh, and I do find it interesting. There are four mats, two of the mats are brown. I think that that's one of the adjustments she made that, um, that made people happy. But there are some darned amazing shadow colors in the Celestial Divinity and I don't, I'm not as excited about this color story. So I'm very curious to see how it does end up, um, rating for me once I compare it, once I use it, uh, play with it and compare it to the, the divinity. So you will see some videos on that. Uh, I know I'm very late uh, to the game, but I, there were shipping problems. I did not get my hands on it early enough uh, in the Christmas season to be able to get um, a video out at the same time as, as other people did. It got lost in the post and I was not about to buy a second one. Now I will say that there are some other palettes that uh, did come in and I just didn't want to start showing you a bunch of palettes that I got late last year. Um, that would not make a whole lot of sense. So I just picked the one that I thought would be of most uh, interest to you and uh, showed you that one. As we go through uh, 2022, you are going to see some palettes that I got late uh, last year, but a lot of them are actually going to be from early 2021. Uh, 2021 has been, um, had been a, uh, was, we'll just say was, a uh, tough year. And uh, there's there were some times when I had uh, trouble filming. And it's kind of the same this year, it's touch and go. And so I'm going to get through as many palettes and whatnot as I can um, from the inventory I have. If you are not aware, I am doing a no buy. That one for sure I will put in the video because I want to uh, have folks uh, click on it. If uh, you are contemplating a no buy, you can see my rules or if you're just curious, if you want to be nosy, <laughs> take a look uh, at that video and uh, take a look at the, the rules I've given myself. Uh, there's really not much coming in. I have allowed myself a palette for my birthday and a palette for Christmas. And that's it. As far as uh, makeup, I'm not buying anything with dollars. <laughs> if I have um, points or coupons or somebody gives me something, I, sure, I won't have a problem making a purchase, but it's not money coming out of my bank account, if you know what I mean. And I almost forgot one uh, category, and it is the first palette used in 2022. And uh, it's going to be one that I've already talked about. If you remember the category new favorite, this one came to me right uh, at the beginning of the year and um, I think it was, by the time I got it, it was really late in December or early January, but man, I was filming really soon after receiving it because I was, I was really excited to have it. And again, as I said, I think I, I mentioned uh, when I first showed this in this video is that I felt like volume five, they got it right. They, they got what I was hoping from the Norvina line in this one. And I think I have the deep purple one, I have the light pink one, and now this one. And I don't, I don't want to mess the volume numbers, so that's why I'm giving you colors. And, and to me, this is the one out of the line. And, uh, and I was so happy to start off the year with such a gorgeous palette. So that's it, uh, a little bit of a tour 
of my collection based on prompts from Samantha and Allie Glines. So Samantha March and Allie Glines. And this was a lot of fun. And I miss doing tag, just tags on YouTube. If you know of any really nice, fun tags on YouTube and you know I haven't done it yet, send them my way. I, I'm kind of in the mood to do a few more. I think that they're enjoyable, they're fun to watch, and you get to um, hear about things you may not have heard of and find out more about a YouTuber you might like to, to watch. So yeah, that's it uh, from me for this tag. Thank you so much to Samantha March and to Allie Glines for coming up with this version two of their initial eyeshadow palette tag. And uh, if you have not done this tag yet and you have a YouTube channel or Instagram, I tag you to come up with your own personal answers to these tag categories. And um, other than that, I wish you all a great day and uh, see you in the next video. But for now, take care.